Hello, welcome to Secure Talk, your trusted source of information on the latest threats, trends, tools, and technology related to cybersecurity and compliance. Join our hosts as they discuss a wide range of topics and speak with leading cybersecurity, technology, and compliance experts. Now is the time for Secure Talk. Hello, everybody. Welcome to Secure Talk. Secure Talk is brought to you by Adequest, your cybersecurity and compliance partner. My name is Mark Schreiner, and I will be your host of this edition of Secure Talk. Today, we have a special guest joining us from the other side of the planet. We have Mr. Nathan House, who is a security consultant who's worked for a variety of firms and organizations such as BP, BT, Thomson Reuters, T-Mobile, Vodafone, and others. He's also a leading provider of cybersecurity services um, through his company, Station X and is a leader in online cybersecurity related edu- education. Nathan, how are you today? Yes, that's a great introduction. I'm uh, great, thank you. How are you doing, Mark? Good, good. And by the way, where are you? Uh, I'm in Budapest right now. Is that where you hang your hat or is that where you call home or where do you, uh, what are you doing in Budapest, if I can ask? Uh, 9% corporation tax is the answer to that. Okay. Um, lo- <laughs> Low, low, low taxes, uh, also 15% uh, personal tax. So uh, for company reasons, um, it's, it's actually a good idea to be here. It's a bit of a tax haven for Europe, um, is Hungary. Um, so, uh, oh, and also they have skilled staff as well. Um, it's a high level of education and, um, uh, and, and a low wage, essentially. So, that, so they, they need people, they need tech companies. I appreciate the honesty and um, and it's slightly envious. I, I having lived in Hong Kong and Singapore, where you know local taxes right, yeah. are fifteen to seventeen <laughs> percent. But as an American, um, even when we live out of the side of the country, uh, we still get dinged. <laughs> so I'm right, really yeah, envious yeah. for a few Europeans. Actually, everybody in the world can just kind of run off to these tax havens, and then and, and it's amazing the amount of talent that you can get in Eastern Europe right now for, like you said, a, a really um, reasonable wage. <laughs> Yeah, it's a little criminal, actually. Um, I, I think it's better to pay a little bit more and um, and, and be a bit fairer. But you, p- companies are really um, uh, not paying a lot here, which is uh, which is not very good. But also, is why you're getting brain drain from here. People are leaving. Uh, half of Hungarians don't live in Hungary, so uh, that, that gives you an idea of the the situation here. Also, uh, it's not just about tax. Um, there's uh, it's pretty nice weather here. It's uh, 31 degrees at the moment, so uh, that's also uh, a plus. See, 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 now that's your third strike against you, all right? Because I'm from Seattle, and 31 is like never. It never happens here, right? Seattle's probably similar to London, right? So like today is actually a sunny day, um, but it's one of the rare ones, right? <laughs> so anybody anybody who's living in a low tax place with with really nice weather, oh man, I'm envious. But hey, what we're here to talk about uh, today is um, you know cybersecurity, uh, cybersecurity education. Um, and some of the trends in the industry. But before we jump into that, because um, and I know I know we don't have, we we kind of have limited time here. Uh, before we jump into that, can you give us a little bit about your background, um, how you got into cybersecurity, and you know, and maybe explain a little bit more about what you do? Yeah, sure. Well, I, I'm Nathan House. I'm the founder and CEO of Station X, which, as you say, is a cybersecurity training company, but also a consultancy. I've got about 25 years or so experience. It all depends on when you start counting. I got into this because of, I'm, I'm an old person, uh, relatively. Um, I got into this before security was a thing. It wasn't an industry. Um, IT was barely an industry when I first got into it. So I got into it through being an interested in reverse engineering uh, software and, and, and such and just playing around with things. So that's how I ended up in the area of security. And then and security wasn't important then. And then suddenly the internet came around and it was like, okay, security is becoming a little bit more important. Then we started selling things online and then it started to, start to be an industry where you could actually make some money. Well, then, I'll um, oh, go ahead. Keep going, sorry. Uh, yes, yeah, so, so that's how I got into it. It just, just evolved, start, started the uh, security company. And it's just evolved over time. And one of the latest things I've done is, as you mentioned, I created the uh, the complete cybersecurity course, which has now had about 100,000 students in 175 countries. And I think that pretty much makes it the most popular uh, cybersecurity course that there is on the Internet. Well, I, I actually took the course, and that's how I became um, – how, how, how I be, uh got connected with you. And um, yeah. Yeah, I took the, uh, what's it called? The Complete Cybersecurity Course Hackers Exposed, which I think is about 120 lectures, 11.5 hours of video. 
um, and very, very affordably priced, very well done. I'm, I'm kind of a, I'm a tough sell uh, when it comes to online education. I'm pretty particular uh, and demanding. Uh, you know, if I, I figure if I, I, it's not even necessarily the money, it's the time that I'm investing in this. And if, if, yeah, I'm, absolutely, and yeah. if I'm gonna, you know, commit the time to it, I want quality out of it. And I, I really enjoyed the course. I learned a lot and it helped me with my kind of, uh, transformation or kind of career pivot into the cybersecurity space. So, but let me back up a little bit. Back in the day when, you know, you, you, there was, you know, IT was just becoming a thing and there wasn't, you know, there was really wasn't a security industry. Were you pretty much self-taught or how did you, where did you go and how did you learn about cybersecurity? Yeah. I mean, everyone was self-taught back then because the, the, there wasn't really, there was nothing, you know, this, this was, this was the beginning. So there was, uh, uh, IT technology, computer information, but nothing was really geared towards security. It was all just, you know, let's have a password. That was about as far as it went. Yeah, so absolutely, you had to be self-taught. Uh, and that's just a case of um, playing with stuff is is, is really uh, where you get to. And then when, when virtual machines came around, that was amazing. Uh, I, I had a bedroom that was absolutely chocked full of uh, computers because that was the only way you could play with anything. And then once the virtual machine came around, you, you could put it all on a, on a single machine or a few machines. So that made it great. But yeah, essentially self-taught. And then books came out and other and you know and other uh, learning materials. So then you could you could start to learn. And how important how important is it to have kind of an ecosystem of friends or colleagues that are also you know have similar interests and sharing information? Is that was that important for you at all? So I didn't have too much of that. Um, apart, apart from a little bit online, uh, I, I'm from the UK. I think the, the hacker community was, was always stronger in the U S uh, and weaker in the UK. Um, so I didn't, I didn't have that so much, but I would suggest if you were new to uh, security or, or IT, that that would definitely be something that you would want to, uh, you would want to explore because you, you just, get information quicker because of the people are sharing it with you. Well, I'm, I'm going to come back to that um, in a subsequent question, but um, how did you or when did you first decide that, hey, you know what, um, I enjoy this, I know about it, and um, I, I'm going to start to teach? How did that come about? Um, I, I've, I've done consultancy for a long, long time, and I wanted to stop focusing on consultancy. Um, when you get to a certain stage in consultancy, it it's almost not even about security anymore. It becomes political. It's about convincing sea levels uh, about their risks, and it, I got a little bit um, a little bit disenchanted with that. And I decided I thought it would be more interesting to to teach people because there was a. There's a, there's a hole in the market. People needed what people need actually is a lower price, affordable, accessible information, which wasn't or isn't really there so much in the security industry. You, when you go on a course, you're looking at a thousand dollars, two thousand dollars, something like that, if you to to go visit. So, I, so I wanted to create something that was much more accessible because we have a skills shortage uh, in cybersecurity, IT security. So, I wanted to uh, fill that gap a little bit. And and clearly, that there, there is a gap because um, the the courses I've got are, are selling like hotcakes. So, why don't we um, talk a little bit about your courses, and then I want to come back and hear your advice for people who. Um, are, are you know just out of university or just getting started and they want to go into cybersecurity or people like myself who are mid-career uh, professionals who want to kind of pivot in that area but step by step tell us tell us about your courses um, I, I I mentioned one the complete cybersecurity course hackers exposed but go ahead yeah so uh, on uh, on station X we have uh, a number of courses uh, 40 or so and they're all geared towards security professionals or those that want to be security professionals. Um, so, for example, we've got courses on Linux because Linux is an important operating system within uh, security. You've got courses on Nmap and Kali and hacking courses, cybersecurity courses. So we've got, we've got the full range in order to try and uh, create uh, a number of courses that can create a, a well-formed um, cybersecurity professional. Excellent, excellent. And what's the best way if, if somebody wanted to take one of your courses, where do they go and, and, and get more information? 
Um, you should just go to www.stationx.net and um, you'll find the courses there and um, the latest. There's um, sales that are often on, so you'll see whether or not there's a sale on best uh, if you can grab one of those sales uh, that, that come up. But yeah, um, just do that. Also, um, there's a newsletter. Uh, if you get if you go onto the newsletter, we'll also send you when there's um, sales and special bundles. And uh, but uh, stationx.net. And are you? Uh, what's your roadmap? Are you planning any new courses in the in the near future? Uh, then the next thing uh, we're doing is creating a a, a test uh, exam for the complete cybersecurity course and a certificate for that. So um, an an exam. Uh, there'll be two certificates for that. We've not actually solidly decided on what, what exactly how we're going to do it, but there'll be some sort of certification you can gain from that training. That The complete cybersecurity course, I think you took uh, part one, but there's actually four parts, about 50 hours, maybe one to three months of training there. Um, that, that will become a, um, a certificate that you'll have to uh, do an exam um, and an interview for. Yeah. Um, and it's on my to-do list to go and take those uh, those other courses. But but I got to say, I mean, your your course was a big step for me to build the confidence to start, you know, digging even deeper and deeper into d d different areas of cybersecurity. Um, what advice, as I said before, what advice would you give to uh, people who are just getting started on their careers or their career path and, and they have an interest in cybersecurity? You did mention, and I've, we've heard this before, that they're... Um, the demand is far out reaching the supply of, of talent or qualified cybersecurity uh, professionals. So there, there's this opportunity out there, but let's just say I'm just, a, you know, just going to university or just getting out of university um, or maybe haven't even gone to university. I want to be, uh, you know, pursue a career in cybersecurity. What's, what's my first step? So it might not be a surprise to you, but, um, I get asked this question maybe 10 times a day. Okay. So um, uh, literally uh, 10 times a day, uh, if not more. So because of that, I created a career guide, uh, a, li a little uh, PDF that's uh, a few pages for people to read. So uh, first thing I would recommend you do is uh, just do a quick Google search for that. So that's Station X career guide uh, and get a hold of that. And I've uh, put a six step process into that as to how to uh, get into uh, cybersecurity. Um, but basically the the first step is understanding the industry, which a lot of people don't understand. I, I found um, a lot of people think that the cybersecurity or IT security is all is just about hacking and just about technology, uh, which is not. It's a skill about managing risk and reducing risks. So, the first step is understanding the industry, and I talk about how, how you can do that and also help you understand where you want to go in cybersecurity. It's a huge umbrella of an industry with jobs ranging from pen testers through to um, chief information security officers, totally different roles, totally different skill sets. So you've got, first step is you've got to understand the industry. Uh, after that, obviously, you need education, um, and you don't necessarily need a degree because of the demand that's out there, but a degree can be helpful. Without a degree, I also give some tips in my report as to how to do that. Getting certified is also a good idea, the various qualifications that you get that are out there. Um, some you can't get until you've already got experience, so you need to get, the certi you need to get some of the certificates that are, uh, are possible to take without experience. I give some recommendations for the ones you can uh, take uh, within my uh, career guide. Uh, they're good. You, you're, another good point is check the job market to see what are the certificates that people are looking for for the sorts of jobs that you want to do and then pursue those certificates. I give some good links for how, for how to do that as well um, in the guide. Uh, experience is a big problem when you're new. When you uh, first start out, you have no experience everybody's looking for experience. So you need to give yourself experience by practically practicing what it is that you do. So for example, on my course, a lot of it's practical. It's setting up virtual machines, setting up VPSs so that you can actually practically do the things that are, you, are actually being talked about. And you can also go to things like hacker spaces and then you need to, um, demonstrate all of what you've done by a public by some sort of public profile 
um, and, and that way you're, you're more likely to get hired and visit things like DEF CON, Black Hat, Derby CON, Shmoo CON, and get to know people. That's some amazing uh, advice right there. And uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go download the career guide. Now, probably if you don't mind, maybe share some of that in our, in our newsletter, um, put a link in there or something like that. I think it's very, very helpful. Um, I'm a member of an organization here called ISSA, um, and it's a, it's a national organization. Actually, it's an international organization. And uh, the Puget Sound chapter has a, um, a meeting uh, every, every month. Uh, it's incredibly informative, but also that because there's 60, 70 people who are either cyber, in the cybersecurity um, space or um, looking to, to move into the space, there's just this free flow of information and um, support. And so, uh, you know, everything that you said just kind of... Uh, yeah, any support group like that is is, is great. Yeah, yeah. I, I absolutely would recommend anything like that. Coming back to credentials for a second, I mean, because I'm looking at your list of credentials here and um, I'm not going to read them all because we don't have that much time, but uh, you've got, uh, you know, a, a very impressive uh, resume or CV here. Um, if you had to pick just one or two, um, can you do that? What, 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 which, which one would you pick in terms of either its marketability or just the, the knowledge that you acquired in terms of pursuing that credential? So um, I'll, I'll, go, I'll go through some of them. So CISM, Certified Information Security Manager, if you wanted to go into management. If you're not wanting to go into management, don't necessarily need it. The, the gold standard or almost like the default one is the CISSP, so Certified Information System Security Professional. I think you need five years experience for that. So that would be the one that you would aim for. That is the one that you'll see on all the job the job specs. Um, so that's the one you should aim for as you become a little bit more senior. If you wanted to go into pen testing, uh, then definitely the uh, OSCP, the Offensive Security Certified Professional. That's the gold standard for pen testing. There's a more junior version of, the, of that, which is the um, Certified Ethical Hacker CEH, which you can do maybe before the OSCP. The OSCP is a hard exam. And if you want to, uh, I guess, at the peak of consultancy, at the peak of architecture, enterprise security architecture, then I would recommend SABSA uh, the, or SCP, the SABSA Chartered Ar Architect Foundation um, and Advanced. The SABSA course is excellent. That's if you really want to become... Uh, a true enterprise security architect. And, and those are the guys that get paid uh, the most money, even sometimes more than uh, chief information security offers. And that's the SABSA qualification. But but that's an expensive course. You're talking $2,000 plus, $3,000. Wow. Okay. So, some great tips there as well. And speaking of expensive courses, um, I've been doing some uh, some investigation of um, you know uh, master's degrees or master program, uh, mostly online. Um, and I mean, what are your thoughts in terms of the importance of pursuing a an MS degree um, related to IT security? So I think it, it's good to have, uh, but but not necessary. Uh, you can still get jobs without it, but you're going to have to demonstrate your ability in, in another way. And I was alluding to this in my uh, conversation before I mentioned this in my career guide. So you need to have a public profile if you're not going to go down serious qualification routes. So maybe you have a security tool that you've developed, you've got a blog, you've got a, you've got a Twitter account, so you're demonstrating your ability so you can sell yourself. So the the qualification is good and the knowledge you gain is also good um, obviously through those things but it's they're not essential they're not essential but if you can do them I would recommend it uh, if you want to go into more of the management area of security then uh, an MBA um, may be something that you might have to consider after you do um, a security qualification excellent okay um, just a few more questions here uh, I mean you've been in the industry for a long time since since the beginning of the industry um, in terms of cybersecurity. Can you tell us a yeah. an interesting story or something that was kind of something funny that you observed? And of course, you can anonymize it. But um, you, you, do you have a, a favorite story? Um, yeah, sure. Um, I worked for an investment bank, and the the bonuses came out. I, I, this was actually just before I worked there as a consultant, and um, I got to find out about this uh, after the fact. So the bonuses came out, big banking bonuses. I don't, I don't know if people are aware, but in banking, people get huge bonuses, um, you know, especially like the traders and such, you know, millions or, or, or even uh, or less, you know, but, but lots of money. And 
somebody was not happy with their bonus. So what they'd done is they'd hacked into one of the systems and they'd increased everybody's bonus. Uh, and I can't remember by how much, I think maybe 20, 25%. Everybody in the company had had their bonus increased by 25% by this hack. And and the money had gone out. Oh, wow. <laughs> yeah. So, so what, do you, what, did they, so what did they do? Then, then there was in this dilemma of what, what were they going to do? Were they going to pull the, pull the bonus back, ask for it back, admit they'd been hacked? And in the end, they, they stayed quiet about it uh, and just let everybody have that, that extra bonus. And they never found out who did it. I was going to say, if you knew who that was, I would have him come and work for my company. <laughs> just... They suspected uh, who, who it was. But uh, this, was, this was back in the day. And, you know, detection capabilities, forget about it. I mean, I mean, detection capabilities aren't that great now, but back then, uh, forget about it. You know, there's just nothing. So they, they only had suspicions, um, so so they couldn't uh, nail it on anybody. But uh, that was, uh, yeah, that was that was great. So you were talking a lot of money. That was oh, a lot yeah. of money. But obviously for banks, but for us, it's a lot of money. But for banks, you know, <laughs> probably not so much. Yeah. Um, I, when I worked in Singapore and Hong Kong, um, I had a lot of banking clients. And, uh, you know, our company would give bonuses, but the banks would give big, big bonuses. And like you said, sometimes it was, you know, equal to one year or two years of their normal salary, sometimes even more, right? So, yeah. wow, 25% on that uh, enterprise wide. I'm sure the uh, the company's morale went way up. That was, uh, well, except maybe for the C-suite, but uh, it, very, very cool. <laughs> um, like, yeah, 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 yeah. The people, were, some people were happy, some people were not happy. Uh, yeah, I guess. Um, so, so just a couple more questions here. Um, What's what are the big trends that you see in cybersecurity? I mean, a lot of people are talking about you know big data, AI, uh, GDPR. What about you? What do you see? And then be a little bit specific about it. Um, trends. Uh, so one of the big trends we've just uh, started seeing towards the end of 2017 uh, is the uh, ransomware becoming uh, less prominent versus the versus crypto mining malware so moving away from ransomware um that uh, that's or crypto jacking so essentially that's how if people don't know that's malware uh, on a device that is doing crypto mining to um essentially make money there's a very low barrier to entry uh, to put crypto mining software it's only a few line lines of code there's a high price now on, on cryptocurrency so we will see a lot more crypto miners um, a, a, across the board um, for the foreseeable future. Um, perhaps not quite as obviously damaging as ransomware, but can potentially uh, cause um, outages uh, and other issues. Yeah, because the interesting thing about that is like with, with ransomware, um, you may get an ROI, you may not, right? Yeah, if if the ransom's too high, people might just walk away, right? Or if they've done a backup, they Could, might just yeah. walk away. But with the crypto jacking, um, as soon as soon as they've um, you know infected somebody's machine, they immediately start to reap benefits. And like you said, it's just a couple lines of code. How can somebody yeah. tell? I mean, I, I wonder about this all the time. You know, I mean, it's like, oh, why is my computer working this is so slow? Is it? I mean, is there some malware on there? Is it, you know, is, have I been crypto jacked? How how can somebody tell? How do you know? Well, it's 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 super difficult. Each each type of attack will have a different different profile, but. Really, it's down to CPU usage, and if there is unusual CPU usage, if the and obviously the malware writers know this, so they want to keep it on the lower side so it doesn't eat up too much. You get crypto jacking in your browser uh, too, which is pretty common. So if your browser's um, going high in the CPU more than it should, then that's um, that's that's a problem. Within Chrome, there's a task manager, so you can actually look at the, the task manager there and a breakdown of what uh, what might be eating up the CPU. And what would you look for under task manager? So, I mean, just some kind of unnamed uh, or unknown app or what? Um, the, uh, a tab that is uh, running up CPU. That, that, that shouldn't, you okay. know, it's just a page that, I mean, the browser shouldn't be eating up too much CPU gotcha. ever really, right. um, unless you're doing something, um, well, that's obviously using the CPU, but generally, you know, just browsing around doesn't, uh, doesn't run up your CPU. So anything, 
that's knocking that up. Um, you need to be aware of. But it, it, these are this is not these are not clear signs. Right. It's it's tricky. It's um that's that's part of the problem. Right. And it can be your 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 phone, your 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 uh, tablet, your PC, your Mac device. Um, and, and even yeah. these days I've heard that, uh, they can, you know, use industry, industrial advi- devices as well. Um, if they can, you know, just tap into some of that computing power. Uh, it's amazing too. I mean, I don't know if you, you've seen the, uh, the numbers, uh, the, uh, the amount of energy that, uh, miners or Bitcoin miners or just, uh, uh, crypt- cryptocurrency miners are using right now, but it's something on the, on the level of, uh, you know, one, a mid-sized atomic bomb every six months or something like that. It's just just crazy amounts of energy right, they're using yeah. up. Right? But uh, so okay, so yeah, absolutely. Okay, so what's uh, what's next for you? What uh, what keeps you excited about the future and and Station X? Um, what should we be looking for? Um, I I really enjoy teaching people. Um, I, I find I get a lot more back uh, from that uh, than than consultancy. With consultancy, you you're helping the you know, the big sort of nameless um, giant, uh, but with uh, training people, you, you get a personal connection and, uh, and personal emails and all, all of the messages I've got of, of uh, people um, and the success that sets the success that they've had uh, really, um, uh, it, it's, it's really nice. Uh, so so yes, yeah, so I'm just going to continue uh, continue doing that in training. Well, I think you're you're really good at what you do, um, and I, I appreciate the uh, the materials that you've and the courses you've put together. Again, I was just I'm just taking a quick look here. Uh, the course I took has a, a very high rating. I think it's a four four point six average rating, which is uh, puts it amongst the most highly rated uh, uh, IT or cybersecurity courses that I've I've come across. Um, and you said you've had, yeah. you, go ahead, sorry. And, that, and that's my, and that's actually my lowest rate. Oh, really? course. The other ones are rated higher. Yeah. Oh, so. so, so I took the lowest rated one. What's up with that, man? <laughs> I got to get back well, in there. The, the, the first one is the beginner course. So it gets rated a little bit down by people who are already, uh, experts. Ah, right. Uh, whereas the, the later courses are more advanced. So the advanced people don't, don't moan so much about, yeah. about them. That's awesome. And you said that you have something like a hundred thousand students have taken your courses globally right now, right? Right. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Good. Hey, uh, do you do you ever travel to the states? Uh, yes, I do. Um, usually uh, once or twice a year. I'll be coming over in August or July, August, potentially. Okay. Well, if you have a chance to visit uh, California. Oh, okay. Uh, well, if you have a chance to visit the Seattle area, I was going to say, um, you know, we uh, at Equest we do a lot of work with with Microsoft. We are a Microsoft cybersecurity and compliance partner. Um, and you know, it'd be great to connect. Uh, we just a couple of weeks ago toured the uh, cybercrime um, facility there uh, at, at Microsoft, oh. and it was, it, was, it was pretty interesting. But if you're ever in this area, let me know. Um, and really appreciate your time and your courses. Uh, again, if people wanted to find out more about your courses, please remind everybody again where they go. Uh, www.stationx.net and uh, check them out there. Excellent, excellent. Nathan, hey, I appreciate your time. Wish you a great, I guess it's evening for you there, right? It is, yeah, it's six o'clock. Okay, well, it's uh, it's Miller time, as we'd say here. I'm sure you have something right. slightly better over there. Anyway, you have a great night and uh, hope to talk to you again soon. Yeah, okay, thanks a lot. Welcome Cheers. to Secure Talk, your trusted source of information on the latest threats, trends, tools, and technology related to cybersecurity and compliance. Join our hosts as they discuss a wide range of topics and speak with leading cybersecurity, technology, and compliance experts. Now is the time for Secure Talk.